tonight for our devotional thought, um, I want to take us to this time in the ministry and life of Jesus that's right after he gives the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Sermon on the Mount is a, this great, incredible sermon in which Jesus gave unqualified grace and kindness uh, when he talked about the Beatitudes and the great lessons that he gave within it. But then he ended the sermon with unqualified toughness, um, with talking about the house that falls because it doesn't have the right foundation of the words of Jesus, which are then practiced. And so when we come down from, in the life of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount into the valley where he's now dealing with people, uh, we can also have a feeling of letdown, not just geographically, but spiritually. Because when you look at the text, you wonder, well, how can leprosy or paralysis compare to you know, the things that he's talked about with hatred and marriage and um, greed and all of those types of things? Well, isn't disease you know, kind of way down the list? Well, for everybody but the people who have the diseases, maybe that's true. But, but notice in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus has already said he has a deep concern for people, especially people on the margins. Remember the Beatitudes themselves. And so when, when you look at what happens in the life of Jesus after the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 8 and 9, you have all these miracles that start to take place where he's reaching out to the furthest people on the margins of society and gradually moving in to the people um, who are not so outcast. And so uh, we have this series of miracles. And so the first one then that I want to look at tonight is just this miracle that uh, is committed with this, this man, a leper, this most outcast of all people in Jewish society. Verse 1 of chapter 8 says, When Jesus came down from the mountain, huge crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came up to him. Now, lepers were absolutely considered unclean by Jewish society and law and praxis. And so they were, they were people who had to walk on the other side of the street as you. They had to declare their uncleanliness. Uh, they lived in cities and towns outside you just makeshift, almost homeless camps outside of the main city of the people of God. They were excluded from every facet of faithful Jewish life of faith. They couldn't go in the temple. They were really the walking dead. Um, and their healing in Scripture, like in Leviticus 12, it was compared to the raising of the dead. So here Jesus is reaching out, first of all, on the other side of the Sermon on the Mount. He's reaching out to the most marginalized of all the people. And notice what happens. They're in this great crowd, and this man is where he probably should not be in the midst of a great crowd. But he comes with the specific purpose in verse 2 of worshiping Jesus. And incidentally, this is the same word, same word that is used for worship when the devil had tempted Jesus to just momentarily worship him in order to receive the power of the world. And so here's this first miracle on, and, and we discover who Jesus is uh, just immediately. And notice what the leper says in verse, at the end of verse 2. He says, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. Um interesting choice of words. He doesn't ask Jesus to do anything. He just calls him immediately Lord. And I think he means it in the imperial sense as, as understanding there's something more to this person of Jesus than just a noble person. And he's, he treats Jesus immediately with respect. He doesn't demand help as a right he says, if you want to, you can, honoring his ability. And so he has faith in the sense of respect and the confidence that if he wants to, he can heal him. And so faith doesn't, you know, honestly know if the Lord in every case intends to heal us. I mean, let's be honest, the death rate is 100% the last I checked. So at some point, the Lord makes the decision not to heal every one of us. But, but honest uncertainty about healing 
uh, has always been a part of, of our existence. Paul himself had that thorn in the flesh, which was unhealed. We can never presume to order God to do anything. And so here we are on the other side of this, and so this Sermon on the Mount, and you know we maybe also feel a little unclean after hearing the Sermon of Jesus. And here is Jesus, this man, approaching him. If you want to, you can heal me. I wonder if there's a history of disappointments in this man's voice, bitterness even. But something astonishing happened. Happens. Look at verse 3, and it says, Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. You know, if Jesus had stepped back and had spoken this healing, it would have been a different kind of, of miracle. Think about Naaman, uh, you know, healing Elisha in 2 Kings 5. He could have just spoken it or given him a, a, him a command on how to be cleansed, but he reached out and grabbed his hands. And I believe this is the gospel on display in that grasp. Ceremonially, this would have made Jesus unclean, and yet Jesus cannot be made unclean. He is too pure, and so he takes that which would have made him impure, and he makes it pure. And so Jesus performs this miracle by his own authority. And immediately, verse 3 says, he was cleansed from his leprosy, the man was. Um, And and it's very important for us to notice it wasn't because of this own man's, you know, it wasn't his fault. No limit is placed on Jesus' ability to heal. And so it says, then Jesus told him, now you be sure not to tell anyone about this, but go show yourself to the priest and bring the gift that Moses commanded so that you can be an example to them. It's a surprising conclusion to the healing. We learn Jesus has modesty here. Uh, He's not interested in attaching this healed leper to himself in any kind of way to promote him as a traveling, you know, billboard of how effective his healings are. This healing man is to render scriptural obedience to the law. We'll just end out this little devotional tonight and having looked at this healing Just be astonished at the willingness of Jesus to help this man, the most outcast of all people in Jewish society. And if he's willing to do that for this man, is he willing to do that for me or for you? Does he care about your own struggles? Does he care about the things that you're hurting over? The things that you look at in your own life and you feel a little May we borrow the word, you feel a little leprous about whatever it is. You feel unclean because of the things in your life. This this healing demonstrates forever that Jesus can make you clean. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flames.